You need to know this. Today, the House Democratic Caucus rejected President Obama's tax cut compromise. In a closed-door meeting, Democrats voted down the current tax cut proposal by a voice vote. The vote is non-binding, so Speaker Pelosi can still bring the legislation to the floor if she chooses, but that seems unlikely. Democrats in the House are already crafting a counter-proposal, one that likely addresses raising the estate tax, a tax that only affects people who die with incomes more than $5 million, or whatever it ends up being set at. Democrats see the new estate tax provision as a giveaway, giveaway to millionaires and billionaires. Ultimately, though, Democrats are most upset with the way the situation was handled. Take a look. I haven't impugned the president's motives, and they shouldn't be talking about political theater. I care very deeply about trying to get the deficit down in a way that does not do a great deal of damage to the quality of life in America. We ought to be able to have honest differences of opinion without those kind of characterizations. The House approved a deal speak that spoke only to the middle class tax cuts uh, last Saturday. It couldn't get through the Senate. What was President Obama supposed to do? Try to change the vote. He's the leader of the country, he's the leader of my party, and he's a spokesman for the American people. You know, vote counts aren't static things, Megan. Extend tax breaks for the middle class, protect the unemployed. Do not drive up the national debt by giving tax breaks to millionaires and billionaires who don't need it, and in many cases don't even want it. So with the House demanding changes in the, pack, in the package, is the deal dead? And what kind of changes can be made that will bring Democrats on board while preserving Republican support? Congressman Peter DeFazio from Oregon was one of the men who pushed for this vote within the Democratic caucus, now joins me here in the studio to discuss it. Congressman, welcome back. Hey, thanks, Tom. Uh, so, first of all, tell me about this vote. What, what... Uh, well, it was, it was uh, my resolution, strongly supported by a number of members, particularly uh, Lloyd Doggett, Jay Inslee, and uh, Jim McDermott. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, uh, it, it's unprecedented. Uh, I've been here 24 years. Uh, I cannot remember a time when the Democrat caucus has gone on record on any pending legislation, let alone uh, an initiative by a Democratic president. Uh, and this was nearly a unanimous vote uh, to not go forward with this package. I, I only heard one person say no. Wow. And the press commented afterwards when I went out that they could hear the chants down the hall just before the vote on my proposal of just say no, just say no. Yeah. Now, does the Republican caucus operate in a way where they typically take a vote before they decide, you know, among themselves, like you guys did today, before they then go out and decide how to vote on the floor? I think it's, uh, I think it's been more common there than on our side. Uh, so, but, uh, but it doesn't this, happen this, on the Democratic side. It's been yeah, unprecedented. It's more like herding cats among the Democrats. Yeah, yeah. But, I, but, you know, I'm, this, I'm really this, is, this, this is a big deal. And yes. uh, all the leadership was there. Uh, they heard the debate. I mean, obviously, everybody was there yesterday for Vice President Biden, and he said, take it or leave it. And we just said, leave it. Yeah, that's, that's extraordinary. Now, this vote that was held today and your proposal is non-binding. So I don't know any way the caucus can bind the speaker, but I don't believe she'll violate the spirit of what we did. Uh, mm -hmm. It said the package in its current form is not acceptable, will not come to the floor of the House, and uh, you know, I would expect uh, that she'll abide by that. What I want to do uh, is give both President Obama an opportunity to be the president he told us he was going to be. Uh, no extension of tax cuts for income over 250. Remember, people misunderstand. Everybody up to 250 still gets the break. 100% of Americans still get a break. Yeah. yeah, but it's only your income over 250 that right. gets the Clinton era rates, which work right. pretty darn well in this country. Tens of millions of jobs, balanced budget, not bad. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, that would not be a bad place to go back to. And then this new estate tax thing, where'd this come from? Uh, this is uh, perhaps something to buy uh, Kyle's support for the uh, nuclear treaty with Russia. I don't know where it came from, but it's incredibly expensive. $68 billion to give special additional relief to estates over $10 million. And then two new wrinkles, 100% expensing for the largest corporations in America are sitting on trillions of dollars of cash. They can go out and buy anything they want next year, 100% off their taxes. So they're, right now they have record profits, huge oh. amounts of cash, and they will get to expense things. And guess what? No Buy America provisions. So United Airlines wants to buy an Airbus from France. Hey, go to it. We will subsidize and the taxpayers it. Taxpayers will pay for Yeah, it. by lowering your taxes. And then finally, the Social Security thing. Totally bizarre. We're going to reduce Social Security taxes by 2%. That's pretty big, a third of the employee's right. contribution. That's a lot of money. That's $163 billion in one year. Uh, but don't worry, we're going to make Social Security whole. We will borrow the money, probably from China, and then we will 
re-inject it into the Social Security Trust Fund. So we not only break down the wall between the general fund and Social Security and treat Social Security like some kind of bizarre piggy bank, but we give that tax break to everybody. Millionaire, billionaire, trillionaire, right. doesn't matter. You get 2000 bucks. Member of Congress, you get a $2,000 tax break. What seems particularly bizarre about that 2% hole that they're drilling into Social Security is that some conservative columnists, uh, uh, one wrote in the uh, Washington Examiner yesterday, that if they can get this into place, they will call this the Obama tax cut, so that in two years, when Obama's running for re-election, nobody, in, he and no Democrat, will say, oh, well, let's end the Obama tax cut on working people, and therefore they can make it permanent, and therefore they will drill such a large hole in Social Security right. that the prophecy that they've been making that Social Security is going to collapse will be fulfilled, and then they can privatize Social Security. Yep. No, all of this is a setup. I mean, this will take the deficit next year to uh, somewhere around $1.7 trillion. Can you imagine with this new Republican Congress coming and saying, oh, my God, look, $1.7 trillion. We've got to slash the heck out of everything. Right. Uh, and but, but tax cuts don't count. I mean, I just was on a, you know, this uh, conservative radio talk show, and he's saying, you know, what, you know, all you have to do is cut spending. I said, you know, if we eliminate virtually the entire federal government next year, we can't balance the budget. Yeah. So this is, you know, you can't say that. Well, you, you just want to tax people. I said, yeah, you can, you're only going to balance the budget by both having taxes and reducing expenditures. You right. can't and cut taxes and keep current expenditures and pretend you're not uh, increasing the debt. Well, what's really amazing is when you look at it in the big picture, from the founding of this republic until Ronald Reagan's presidency, we never had a really serious debt problem. I mean, right. even after World War II, we were 120% right. of GDP, but we paid it in five years right. by just growing the economy. Reagan comes in with Reaganomics, drops the top rate from 74 down to 28%, and it runs up in eight years more debt than every president from George Washington and Jimmy Carter combined, and it's just gotten worse every year right. since then. It's time to stop this insanity. And George it's Bush not. doubled it. I mean, yeah. George, the last George of the yeah. most recent. Yeah. And remember, you know, we have had uh, basically supply-side economics, tax cuts, and trickle-down economics since George Bush's uh, tax cuts went through. Yeah. How's that working for you? Yeah. as Sarah Palin would say. Not too darn good. We've got a pile of debt and we haven't put people back to work. And, and the Republicans who are so critical of the stimulus, the biggest component of the stimulus was the Republican provision for $300 billion in tax cuts, which didn't put anybody back to work. And guess what? This is the Obama stimulus tax cuts on steroids with new additions and a heck of a lot more cost. Yeah, it's, it's terrible. Congressman Peter DeFazio, thanks so much for the great work you're doing for initiating this process today. And congratulations on the outcome. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, for, it. Thanks for the opportunity. Up.